Hi, Jack here. So, about four years ago, on this channel, I made a post poking fun at the Perseverance rover, with this Warhammer 40k meme stating in its caption, the Perseverance picture they don't want you to see. It was pretty funny by my standards, because at the time, Perseverance had concluded its seventh month journey to here the red planet Mars, having autonomously navigated itself for a terrifying 7 minutes, travelling from 15 times the speed of a bullet to a gentle 3 mile per hour touchdown, all the while live streaming its data back to Earth and concluding the entire thing with a selfie. The wonders of human engineering, like absolute peak. Now, why Mars? You see, Mars has been a huge point of interest for us due to how uniquely approachable it is. See, around 3.5 billion years ago, Earth and Mars were pretty similar. Both planets bolstered what I guess we can just call liquid water at the surface and both were protected from the sun's the deadly lasers by their respective magnetic fields, which our Earth still is. Mars is a different question. This is something that we've come to know based on a combination of geological, chemical and atmospheric evidence collected by rovers, landers and even orbiters, giving us some of the most majestic images that you've ever seen. These let us know that Mars was once much wetter and warmer with lakes, rivers and even possibly oceans before becoming this cold and dry desert that we know today. As an example, the rover prior to Perseverance Curiosity, you may have heard of it, had found the direct geological evidence of ancient waters with such things as uh, wave ripples. These like undulated lines in rock formation that show us a history of shallow standing water being pushed by winds, something that is very similar to what we'll find here on Earth. Now, when it comes to perseverance though, this thing has been on quite a journey. It was slated to land at the bottom of an ancient lake the size of like Lake Tahoe and I was thinking of like different ones that I could use as an example because at the base of rivers just like we do here on earth it is easier and gives the best chances of finding actual past biological life. And so we did just that with a lot of precision after many years and the rovers were sent in its way to do a lot of this and a lot of that and effectively started drilling into the Cheyenne Falls in 2024. This is a place with sedimentary rocks that used to have liquid water and extracted this, a spotted rock. Now, if you followed this channel in the last couple of months, you would likely have gotten pretty excited at the sight of funny rocks. But in case that you haven't, let me explain why this is particularly cool. So we have these spots on the rocks and we can see that from the center to the outer edges they have changes in color meaning that there's something happening at the center which changes the rock outwardly. So looking into it NASA scientists found some organic compounds which doesn't mean life okay it only means that we're talking about carbon-based molecules here with the addition of two iron molecules called vivianite and greg gregite yeah they, they were named after the people who found them actively iron phosphate and iron sulfide now i don't expect you to remember your chemistry because i barely do that myself sometimes but because of how our universe just works in general and how um, it affects the energy level transitions of things and or in molecular physics terms emission things have a tendency of almost as a rule to move from higher energy levels to lower ones when they go through an energy transmission state. So for something like iron that is pretty freaking stable, in order for it to do anything whatsoever, you might need something like a lot of heat to be uh, added to it, like a significant amount. But from the observations of uh, Perseverance, it is shown that the kind of change happened in a bit more of a spontaneous way that actually was in a rather cold environment. So what gives? Well, interestingly, vivianite and gregite are often found on Earth in association with microbes that use their energy to power their own metabolism, and in return, they create some kind of byproduct, so microbial excretion. And again, to be very precise here, what they produce is not life, but these are the ingredients needed to create life, so the organic compounds like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. 
they could be in conjunction here. So that's an exciting thing. Another hypothesis of this is that uh, this could also be occurring in a very acidic environment. But then again, from the leading paper that was written by Joel Horitz at uh, Stony Brook University, they have found that that is something that can also be ruled out as a possibility, the acidic environment. So in other words, what we're left with and what makes this entire situation very interesting is that some a, a possible candidate for this could be an organism like a geobacter who are this very very weird organism that have like the ability to breathe metal which means that they oxidize stuff like acetate which is basically just carbon and transfer the electrons to the metal like uh, uh, iron or manganese as an example so to go to the processes so these could be actual contenders for what caused this life to spring out. So the process itself is called chemophantasis. It's very analogous to photosynthesis that you know from plants, but where light is being made use of. So in other words, what NASA has concluded is that none of this is explainable outside of the hypothesis of there having been life on the planet prior to today. Now, this is a very different thing from saying that we found sign of past life on Mars or that there's definitely life on Mars, okay? We need to be a little bit precise with the language here. And also the samples that we've got so far are some of the youngest rocks that Perseverance has found and they're still billions of years old. So meaning that whatever organic matter that we might be finding there is not exactly one that might grant us a DNA sample. But very much like Google debunkers amongst you might know, this is where the possibility of isotopic fractionation comes into play because it can help us understand whether or not there were actual life on the rocks. Because if you don't know this, in nature we have carbon right it comes in i think the three general forms is carbon 12 13 and 14 much like the energy levels these are isotopes of the carbon molecule and one of the easiest way for us to tell whether or not something is alive is by looking at the carbon ratio within whatever it might be so if we manage to get the rock samples back to Earth and analyze them, the science is going to be rather easy to give us a conclusive answer to it. Now, I personally think that this is super exciting news, not just because it can give us actual tangible proof of alien life by Earth standards, but also because it's just one of the wonderful examples of just how far we've come. As we've been at this for a while, Earth has been sending stuff like the Viking missions since 1976, where we were pouring nutrient into the soil of Mars just to see what would happen. And we saw the release of some gases and thought that this was a great indicator of microbial life just digesting nutrients. But further investigation indicated that this could have easily just happened with salts. So it wasn't until we actually considered the possibility of Mars being very much like Earth with oceans in the past and lakes that we actually started making this type of progress that we're doing now. So NASA, which unfortunately is being defunded as all hell, is still going to undertake the return um, uh, missions, which is like easier said than done okay like we need to get the samples back we need to put it on the cold scale or the confidence of life detection scale if we were to push it up the way to seven then uh, the average Joe out there might actually start having the thoughts about little green men that can help us narrow to run into area 51 and all make quippy cultural jokes Be a secret when you told your little friend over there now, I really wanted to share this with you because one, I think it's awesome. Two, um, in a time where it is difficult to deal with certain subjects or give an answer that feels remotely satisfactory without feeling like you are being sacrificed at the altar of public opinion, not because you couldn't give a proper answer, but because we're all dealing with like specific aspect of a bigger whole, which will make the reduction of the complexity of the entire thing kind of void of nuance. That was a lot. It feels good to have something that feels grounded. 
from another planet, of course. This is a big question, one that actually might lead us to a path with a concrete answer, and I think that we all need something like that at the moment. So, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I make no promises that I won't cover controversial content because with how crazy things are moving, a lot of people are afraid that some might be mobilizing into actual violence, especially when these individuals are the people who are gearing up for the violence. But I will do my best to cover more chill subject and keep the good vibes because I think we all deserve that right now. So anyways, do stay awesome, stay learning, come back here to the channel to check out some more content and I wish you all to have a wonderful day. Bye.